right, so imagine you are the fixer. That's what Simuma Bena is titled as on the Duma Collective website. Let me read it for you. Uh, the founder of Duma Collective with a BA in political science and international relations, a young creative with extensive experience in event production, sponsorship acquisition, performance direction, street and social media marketing, and uh, having worked on several live events, TV shows, um, her exposure and experience serves as a good creative springboard for a variety of communications platforms. Can I just <laughs> put it all down to she will put you on, like your event, wow. your brand. I mean, that's what it's about. Welcome. I guess we can call it that. I Thank think you so. Much. I think so. <laughs> I mean, maybe you want to describe for anyone who isn't aware of what Duma Collective is, because you do quite a few things, mm -hmm. right? So maybe you can tell us what your unique business is. So I would call it a creative communications agency. Um, we employ creative tools to communicate brand messages. So we work with performing talent. We use events. We do social media. Um, brand strategy. So a lot of things go into communicating brand messages to yeah. an audience um, in a way that will touch an audience, in a way that will make them take action, actually. So, yeah, we plug artists to brands. We uh -huh. plug brands to the events. Plug, we, the plug. We're the, we're the plug. <laughs> That's what we are. <laughs> but, you know, it must have come from a lot of research in the industries that you would, you, you know, operate in. And, and there must have been a gap. So what gap did you see that wasn't being filled? So it was this plugging thing, yes. um, connecting of dots, because I come from a dance background. Right. So I danced for the South African hip-hop dance team. We knew there was such a thing. And I did. <laughs> That's <laughs> huge. Is it, is it an Olympic sport yet? Yes. Because it, well, it should have been. It should be. I mean, we got South African colors. At That's some point, amazing. we were wearing like a Springbok tracksuit. It was a crazy Jeez. time. And we were doing, well, I was working on street dancing circuits. So I was working with hip-hop artists. At the same time, I was working with brands. Yeah. And the brands wanted access to the artists. The artists wanted access to the brands yeah. and the events space and the youth so connecting those dots and at some point I was a bartender at a bar in Santon so oh. I was meeting with like brand managers and engaging with a lot of people in the FMCG space so I figured I want to be the person that people need to make their events successful really? and I just worked really hard at it and um, connected with a lot of people and started to build a network in that space and that's how Duma Collective came to be a thing. That is extraordinary that's really <laughs> great and you know I'm thinking about from a dance point of view right so our parents yes will say, ah, <laughs> you want to be a dancer, how will you make money? Yeah. But perhaps what you've seen from having so many different insights mm -hmm. is that it's not just about standing on stage mm. and doing the dancing. There's a lot more to this industry, isn't there? There really is. There's so much that goes behind the scenes that goes on behind the scenes. I mean, it affects fashion because the dancers have to wear clothes. It affects makeup, so they are makeup artists. It's hair, it's music. Um, it's, it's lighting, it's props, there's so much that goes into a performance. Yeah. So imagine being the behind the scenes yeah. person who connects all of these dots and creates um, kind of businesses and efficiencies around that so that people can make more money from not just being on stage, yeah. but all the other stuff that goes on behind the scenes. So I became the behind the scenes lady and yeah, now we're here. Now we're here. 30 employees later. That is extraordinary. So it's insane. We were talking about your your level, right? That yeah. there must be um, success in what you're doing, or at least viability in what you're yeah. doing, so that you are able to create so much employment for other people. Yeah. But let's talk about the route to this space that Duma Collective is in. Mm. Tell me about some of the challenges, perhaps as a, a young woman, perhaps as a young black woman that yeah. you faced breaking glass ceilings. I think one of the greatest challenges um, I experienced was transitioning from being a freelancer to um, running an operation that right. I, I suppose can function in this economy. Um, you know, when you're working alone, you're able to just do whatever you want, whenever you want to. But now you have people that report to you, people that are accountable to you. And yeah. as you grow, um, even with just the people, the client base also grows. Mm. So I think um, <laughs> my biggest challenge has been corporatizing yeah. and kind of being recognized as a formidable agency that your, your brand can entrust its money to or yeah. the, the bigger companies can entrust their money to. So it's the HR management, the admin, the financial management, the 
paying your taxes on time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, there, there's offices, you know, like just the overheads. And I think it was going from being a creative to being a business owner. Mm. And that was the biggest challenge for me. So yes, being a black female, um, very hard <laughs> in this kind of space. Yes. But I think the bigger challenge is the fact that we aren't taught these things in school. We aren't taught to run businesses, but rather how to work. And I think there's a big need for um, entrepreneurship to become something that is a staple because if you can't get a job what then right and it's not enough to just be able to produce a good it's now you can produce a good but can you run a business that is sustainable in order to produce more of these goods to sell to a bigger market so, I mean this is the <clears throat> question that everyone gets asked and it's kind of the first thing that you talk about these days mm -hmm. how the COVID affect <laughs> your business because if your business is live events yeah Level five, four, even down to three lockdown, we couldn't do that anymore, right? Yeah. Uh, if your business is managing people who are in the arts, mm -hmm. who are speakers, performers, well, you couldn't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. So how did your business pivot, for lack of a, 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 a better word, mm. during this strange time? You know, what's incredible is that we function in such a multifaceted space. I think yeah. the entertainment industry, as well as the FMCG marketing space, really, have so many opportunities open to people who are willing to work hard. So what happened <laughs> when lockdown was looming, yes. um, PH, DJ Shimza, we quickly gathered ourselves. We said, okay, how do we turn an event into a TV show? That's it. And that's what we did. And I think that really flipped the script for us. Um, other than that, we looked to the other things we we're able to do as an agency, brand strategy, which we didn't really focus on. Um, but I started recruiting the right talent and the right, right skills to come in and work on that kind of thing because the network existed. We also went more into digital and we said, okay, cool. Since we can't be on the ground, we can definitely be on your screens, phone, laptop, Love TV. It. So um, it was just looking to what, ha what we have in our network, what we have in our artillery and kind of expanding on that, learning quickly and adapting. Yeah. So yeah. It's so impressive. It's, I can't Thanks. help but beam <laughs> listening to you. It's very cool. So uh, in terms of your artists that you manage, right? Yeah. So let's run through. It's Somizi, mm -hmm. Jessica Ngosi, Michelle, Cuesta is on uh -huh. your books. PH is on your books. Yes. Who am I leaving out? Kalo Mutsirisi Mohano. There we go. How do you go about picking the brand that you'd like to work with? So I would say they chose me. Is it? <laughs> because I think. Um, what is really great about our relationships is that they are relationships. Yes. It's not just a business exchange. It's not just transactional. These are people who's, whose lives I'm invested in. And as such, I would be invested in their careers. Mm. And so would our team. So we work really hard to make sure that their businesses function efficiently. And we expand the talent beyond what they do on screen yes. to other different things that they're able to produce off of their brands. So it's it's... It, it's not them choosing me or me choosing them, actually, but rather the relationship yes. making sense for us to take it to the next level. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, so what's the next level? Making money to... Ah! <laughs> Love it! <laughs> and, you know, this next level that you're, you're taking things to, what are some of the goals and dreams that you have for Duma Collective? Oh, my goodness. Um, you know, I want to see Duma Collective as a creative agency get to established in... 2017 in a hundred years time, yeah. you know, and that yeah. meaning something to a yeah. black child. Um, I really want Duma Collective to be the home of the young creative um, where people can go and do cool things and get paid for it. I want Duma Collective to be pitted against the biggest agencies in the, on the continent, actually, yeah. um, so that any young black creative can show their parent that, mom, my dreams are valid. Um, yes, I want to be a copywriter. I want to be in advertising. I want to make music. I want to dance. Yeah. Um, and they have an example that they can show their parents. I mean, my parents believed, I think, that in this dream when they saw me on a news interview sure. um, to say that, oh, okay, this thing is real and you're actually making money off of it yeah. oh, and you're actually paying other people to do it sustainably. Yeah. I mean, I've had employees for the past five years now. It's extraordinary. And it's, it's crazy that a, a creative dream can be a sustainable contribution to yeah. the economy. and. Oof. The dream for Duma Collective is to continue being that. Well, listen, this is Motivational Monday, and, and I think that you've given us <laughs> that with Duma Collective. Thank you very much for your time this morning, Sibu. Thanks, Bobby. And Sibu Mabeno, founder of Duma Collective, chatting to us this morning on The Morning Show on E. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back.